should you be allowed to insult freely what somebody else holds dear? Should you be able to say what you like about me and the things that matter to me? And is that an essential human freedom? See, the secularist will say yes. The secularist will say that it is his inalienable social right to insult somebody else's faith and religion. And there, there are reasons for that. He, he's, he's dealing with things that somebody else, not himself, holds dear. And he doesn't understand the person of faith who is deeply hurt. I'm, I'm not blaming him, he doesn't get it. Uh, by his insulting his own precious things. Um, the nearest you can get to letting the secularist understand perhaps what he's doing is, is to question whether it, somebody else has the right to insult his wife or his child. It's not, it's not a perfect comparison, but um, it's the nearest we're going to get for them because they, they haven't got this other thing in their life that matters a lot to them. They don't get it, they don't understand it because they're a secularist. They don't see the sensitivity because they haven't got it. And you can understand that. The secularist, therefore, is going to say it's perfectly legitimate. Uh, in fact, it's one of his essential freedoms for him to be allowed to mock and insult the things that people of faith, whatever that faith happens to be, what they hold dear. And we can understand to this extent. Now, now, when it comes to people of faith and their view of the question, should you be allowed to insult something that somebody else holds dear, the cake gets cut one of two ways. Most religions say, if you insult that which I hold most dear, then I have the right to be so affronted by you, I do something to you as a result. So, quite famously this week, of course, in, in, in the situation with Islam. I've looked at some of the cartoons that Charlie Hebdo, this, this uh, office that's been so brutally attacked and people have been violently killed, which we don't approve of, do we? I've looked at some of the things they've been saying, it's in French, but that's okay, about Islam, about what they hold dear. And I could understand that it would be a severe affront. But the cake gets cut two ways. At this point, what do you do about that? Most religions will take the sort of response that, that Muslims have taken in recent weeks. Christianity, on the other hand, takes a different view. And that's precisely the point of the passage today. Because in Mark chapter 8, verse 34, the focus shifts from what it's going to cost Jesus to get salvation for us, onto the basic cost and condition of discipleship, following that Jesus. So, Je suis Charlie, or Je suis poursuivant de Jésus. Sorry about that. That came from I don't know where, it wasn't in the notes. But you know what, what it means? I'm a follower of Jesus. What happens when Jesus is affronted, is insulted, is mocked, is rejected, and suffers? He carries his cross. He bears what he has to bear to be faithful to God. Takes it. And that is not the way most religions approach this sort of issue. It is the Christian way. So in Mark 8.34, the focus shifts onto this. Verse 34, then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. And you can see there in the picture on the screen, there is the cross beam of the cross with a shadow of the cross falling across it. Because what he's envisaging here is the man who goes out to crucifixion being required to pick up the cross beam that he's going to go on and be nailed to and carry it to the point of execution and they'll be crucified Dick France makes it clear in, in his commentary that what's being implied here is that a basic condition of Christian discipleship is to join Jesus on the way to execution 
and Dick France goes on, the metaphor of taking up one's cross is not to be domesticated into an exhortation, merely to endure hardship patiently. Of course, you can apply it that way. But he says, the primary reference in the context must be to the possibility of literally dying, of literal death, he says. And yet, of course, the immediate context is one of denying oneself. Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves. That's the first thing. And then take up their cross and follow me. So, you want to be my disciple? You want to be my follower? Following Jesus, according to Jesus, means not being self-centered and not being self-serving, but being God-centered and God-serving prepared to follow him in the way of the cross. Denying your own self, taking up your own cross, and following Jesus. Following Jesus is dependent on the previous two, denying yourself and picking up your cross. That's what's entailed in following Jesus.